We're at Jeep Beach, if you can't tell. Today, we are posted up at the beach. We're down at Daytona Jeep Week, and we drove 14 hours to get here. We brought some things that I wanted to talk about. Some of my beach essentials and what I always take when I'm going to the beach. Now, this isn't for wheeling. This is for generally just hanging out at some place like this. You've got the family, you got everyone here, and you wanna get some products that kind of make life a little bit easier while you're here. We're also gonna go over some of the tricks and tips that I use when I'm driving on the beach, but let's get right into this video. It's gonna be a good time. All right, guys, so back to one of the first mods. Now, I think this is pretty trick. Now, we obviously have our brand Dirt Road Cred on this flag. I picked these up on Amazon for, I wanna say about $30. They're double-sided printed, and they come with nice clips on the other side. This is a three by five flag, came in about five days, and I gotta say, it's really nice to represent your brand. Now, if you guys have another company or something that you wanna show off, maybe it's your local Jeep club, definitely check this out. We'll leave all the links for all these items down in the description, but for less than 30 bucks to get a double-sided full color flag that looks absolutely killer on the back of here, we wanted to go for a low budget as well as as much advertising as we could. So a three by five is definitely the way to go. You guys can see the full color on there. It is double sided. So we can kind of move over here. You can check that out. Full double sided on here. And obviously just a really nice flag and a way to mount it up and kind of show it off. Now guys, you can't mount up a flag without the actual mount. And for those of you that are fishermen too, I think this would make a great mount to mount one fishing rod in the back. Now we went with, I believe it's the Hall Max or Max Hall or something like that. It was like less than $30 for this mount. And the reason I went with it is because when I looked on Amazon reviews, a lot of folks had reviewed this with the Jeep Wrangler. Now looking at it, it does clear a 37 by 12 and a half inch spare tire with four and a half inch back spacing and a beadlock. This is on the Mopar Extreme Recon tire carrier. So it is poking out there quite a bit and it clears on the last setting. That was a big thing for me. I wanted to make sure that it could extend past that spare tire and give it a nice clean look. This one comes with ad adjustable kind of tightening collars here, top and bottom. And then also a pin if you would like to put something in there and pop it out or even drill a hole into the flag mount. We'll tag all three of these in the description, even this collapsible flag mount here, because I think it's a great idea. If you're gonna pick it up, might as well buy them all three at the same time, get your flag custom printed, and then roll down to the beach in style. The cool thing about this hitch mount too, is it actually came with the 5 8 hitch pin too. So I thought we were gonna have to bring some extra ones, which I've got a ton of them. This actually came with one. So even easier there and kind of surprising because those are a couple bucks in itself, but a very sturdy mount. And we don't go anything over 30 or 40 with this on, but. I'd imagine with the way it's welded up, it would easily work. Now, one thing I will say about this hitch mount, and you guys are probably gonna laugh at this, but it does block your rear view. So just be mindful because the first time I popped it in reverse, we saw an absolute, just completely blacked out image and nothing was available. So I third, at first was like panicked. I thought something was wrong. This does block the rear view, but that's to be expected. I drive at about 30 miles an hour with this and I don't wanna go too much faster just because that flag will start to get frayed. I would say if you're driving local, this would be a great option for you, but just be mindful. It's gonna block off that camera just something to think about. All right, well, you guys don't have to be told this, but you know I'm a Yeti fan. We always run Yeti products. You can see a lot of them in the backdrop of our video. And up on top of here, this is something I'd recommend for the beach. This is a Yeti Tundra 45. Now we've got a lot of different size coolers, but in reality, this one seems to fit the best. It fits in the trunk area, it fits up top here, and also it just is really durable. I've had this one for about six years now, really put it through the ringer, and it's held up to the test of time. Plus it holds ice extremely well. I don't need to pitch this guys to you, but I will tell you that running a beach Jeep like this, it's gonna really pay out to invest in a nice cooler. So the Yeti Tundra 45, we'll leave the link to that one, but I found it to be the perfect size for either up top, for in the back, for even I've seen some mounts on the outside of the tire carrier. But overall guys, this has been the perfect size. This is what I found to work out the best in my Jeeps over the years, JKs, JLs, Gladiators. I just think it's the perfect size. Correct me if I'm wrong and let me know what cooler setup you have, but I think this one works out the best, especially for the beach. It's a good size, holds everything, has dividers in there, but you might've noticed it's sitting on something. So let's pop over to the other side and check what I built on the back of this Jeep. So what I'm talking about, what I made for the back here, we did not do on camera. I know big all to that, but we didn't do this one on camera because I was trying to get it ready for Jeep Beach. But what I did is templated out a nice sheet of three quarter inch plywood and then decided to paint it in a waterproof paint on here. But what I found is really useful about this is it gives me a nice secure platform that's obviously holding the full weight of the cooler completely loaded down and I've got the canopy on the front. Now this is the first version of this, but we do kind of plan on making another one that has nice routed edges. I am not a woodworker or a carpenter by any means. And if you guys are at home, 
give me some tips and tricks. And also if you do any CNC or wood cutting that you have a nice table where I can send you the drafts to this, let's chat because I do want to start making these out. And I'm imagining a lot of people will be interested in them as well. It's a great place to secure all your cargo down below. It bolts on using the factory hardtop points. And honestly, it's simple. I didn't need something too crazy complicated. I gave this a couple coats of paint and it is good to go. The next thing about this, like let me know in the comments. I want to hear if you guys would be interested in a product like this. I found it to be extremely useful because it hides all of our camera gear down below. It locks with the back tailgate, but also gives us a semi waterproof back area. I mean, let's be honest, if it's raining a little bit, there's going to be a little bit that comes through, but I actually notched it out for the soft top mount. So it'll completely work with soft top or the hard top. Let me know in the comments, would this be a product that you guys would be interested in something simple as two pieces like this i could even make it out of a different material but let me know i've had a lot of questions about this in the past but we wanted to chat about it today because i think it'd be a cool product so let me know in the comments what you guys think of this one all right five bucks to anyone that can name this song sounds like a shrek remix that was your wedding song wasn't it that's loud. I mean, I'll give it to him. It was a 392. You can't even hear the engine. So we'll kind of move on to some tips and tricks here. Now, like I said, we are just at the beach for kind of recreation. What I typically like to do is just so you don't look like a noob on the beach, Florida is a little different where a lot of the beaches are really packed down. Where I go in Delaware, where we have the surf fishing pass, it is a lot more kind of mucky, kind of deeper sand that really gets torn up a lot. So what I do is I air down typically to about 20 to 25 PSI. That really helps with the Jeep just kind of tracking in and getting some more traction. The next thing I do, and you guys might critique me for it, but I always put it into four high just for the, just for the meantime. And if I'm cruising along, I would hate to have to shift into two wheel while you're in a stuck situation. And then the last thing that I would give for a tip of just hanging out on the beach like this is if you put it in four high, turn the traction control off, and then hold the button for about 10 more seconds and it'll completely remove the electronic stability control. When you just press it once and the traction control is removed, it doesn't turn everything off. So make sure you do the ESC, it'll completely alleviate it. And it was why I was cutting out so much power when I went to the beach the first time. That was a trick that I just kind of learned about and then also just did it and got a lot more traction when we were doing it. So definitely check that out. But Another thing too, you guys were asking about it, we did fab up the light bracket mounts for our Diodynamics SS5s. So we've got the full mounts up there. My good friend Jordan, I actually got some photos, so we'll pop those up. We spent about till one in the morning making these brackets up that will work with the Motobuilt front bumper. It was a little tricky, we had to fab it up. He has a CNC and a plasma cutter, so we cut it all out, got it welded up, mounted them up perfectly for this trip, so we could see some more light on 95. But let me know what you guys think. We got it perfectly right above our Warren Xeon, and I think it looks sick. All right, so I don't want you guys to chuckle at this one, which I know some of you will down in the comments, but this is something that I've had for all of my Jeeps for a very long time, especially for the beach. These are extremely beneficial. They're called seat armor. So they basically make a towel that slips on the front or the back seats. And I might do a DIY on how to make one of these because you can actually make them pretty easy. But for 30 bucks with the official Jeep licensing on there, it really works out. So with something like this, we're going to unbox it and put it onto the passenger seat because Ryan is extremely sandy. It's like attracted to him. Like, I don't know what the reference would be, but he just catches a lot of sand. So we're going to put that on his side, cover up his seat and completely protect it. But these are super simple to install. No tools or anything. It is a nice way to protect the seats. I know you guys say it's a Jeep, blah, blah, blah. But if you're soaking through your leather seats or even your cloth, this is going to really protect it. The other thing too, to consider if you guys have leather seats, especially the black leather seats and you have the top and doors off, if you touch those seats the wrong way, you're gonna be burning your legs. So you guys know how hot those get. This is gonna protect it. I probably would say go against the black and maybe get some of the tan seat covers, but definitely throw those on over the leather to protect even from the heat and the sun damage. The sun and the salt is really gonna beat those up. And I know, once again, it's a Jeep, but if you can protect those a little bit longer and save it, plus dry yourself off, we'll show you how to get it done. And we'll throw these on and just show you what they look like. So one of the last ones I wanted to talk about, and in a trip like this, you're really gonna use it. This is gonna be good for long-term road trips as well as on the beach. We've got our Yeti cup holder adapter right here. So this has been a fan favorite. There's been a lot of these that have been sold and we've chatted about it a lot on the channel and it's because they work so well. This one Ryan used for his jumbo ass Yeti that held a ton of water for the whole trip. And it was really easy, easy even on this back cup holder too, which a lot of guys questions if it would work with the console and it does. The Yeti fit perfectly fine in there. And it was a great way to store that and then a second way is I would put my wallet and keys and kind of tuck them in here if I didn't have a cup in there. So that's going to work for multi-purpose. If you don't have a jumbo cup for it, you're easily going to be able to store a couple other things when you're using that. So that will leave a link in the description. That is my fan favorite. We've got a few of them in all of our vehicles we have. So definitely check that one out. And this one's for you, Luke, all the way in Daytona. 
Got the Duncan. They still haven't sponsored us yet, so hoping you can work that out and get it going for us. Last but not least, certainly a beach essential for me is to have a stowaway shovel. Now this one by Rugged Ridge is really easy to stow away in the back of the Jeep. As you can see, it just completely unfolds if I had it a little bit more loose. Tightens up. And you are ready to go. Now something like this is absolutely essential. Whether you're just digging sandcastles with your family or you are getting out of a stuck situation, for a beach, definitely have one like this. I would recommend picking them up on Amazon, even a cheap one. And in fact, a lot of the beaches around our area where we're at require you to have something like this. So it's easily stowable. You can really get a nice pouch here and just tuck it in the back of the vehicle. And who knows, even if you're wheeling, this can make for a great accessory to have in the back. It's got a little serration on the side, but this is just a cheap one too. I'm not gonna lie, it's not the best shovel on the market, but for the little bit that you're gonna use it, it'll definitely hold up for you. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, we are down at Daytona at one of the biggest Jeep shows in the country, and we really enjoy coming down here every year. I figured this was a great time to show off some of the Jeep Wrangler Beach essentials, tips and tricks that I use currently when I go down to the beach, and kind of things that I've learned from just going to beaches, checking them out, and really getting some good products dialed down. And we're gonna be posted up here for the rest of the week. We're gonna get a lot of cool content. There's a ton of cool Jeeps rolling around here. So we're really excited to be able to check them out, show you them in person. And then also if there's anything that you wanna see in the comments, drop them down there. Until next time though, my name is Matt with Dirt Road Cred, and I want you to get out there and earn yours.